Over the last years, we have become used to the abuse of the word modern, and now we even talk about the word postmodern C++. But these words, we borrow from historians that use them to describe the eras of Western civilization. Is there anything we can learn from them? So we start recording history in the ancient era, of which I find especially interesting in the classical period. At that time, the Greeks developed elitist proto-democracies in which, uh, okay, sorry, <laughs> in which um, philosophy and the love and pursuit uh, on sharing of knowledge, of knowledge uh, flourished. This allowed them to learn so much at the time. They knew already that the earth was round and its radius and that it rotated around the sun and they even speculated of the existence of atoms. However, with the decadence and fall of the Roman Empire, we enter the medieval era. Europe, divided, becomes too busy fighting each other in feudal wars. A lot of knowledge is forgotten, being replaced by dogmatic truth. The earth is now flat and the sun rotates around the earth. But eventually, a huge, a huge cultural shift comes with the Renaissance. We embrace anthropocentrism and humanism and this idea that truths ultimately emerge from human experience. We rediscover the classics and use their knowledge to pursue science to build more prosperous societies. However, many people believing that there were, in the end, singular absolute truths leads to trouble. This leads to two world wars that leave the Western society traumatized. This finally symbolizes the death of the universal, and we come to embrace contradiction and plurality in our societies. We get to acknowledge that Western, the Western per perspective is just a part, not the whole, in multicultural societies that face the challenge of surviving the conflicts of globalization and late capitalism. Okay, what the fuck was this? Let's talk about programming. <laughs> <laughs> the recorded history of programming starts in the classical era. In this time, initial explorers embedded in elitist proto-democracies, this is universities, gathered so much knowledge and they shared it with each other in a time in which only free software existed. We had languages like Lisp, ML, Ada, Smalltalk that explore all the different philosophies and pattern paradigms of, prog of programming that we know today. We already had type inference, continuations, higher order programming, actor, CSP, so much more. But in the mid-late 80s, <laughs> in the mid-late 80s, we entered the personal computer revolution. Proprietary software is devised as a means to mass produce consumer software. And with it, we stop sharing knowledge with each other. Companies get involved in feudal wars, producing a myriad of languages and change, um, and change in proprietary tool chains and a dogmatic and narrow perspective of object orientation. In this time, we have Java, Visual Basic, Delphi, and yes, medieval C++. I am aware that some conservative forces in our community take pride in something they call C++ classic. This reminds me that such thing does not exist. This is just medieval C++. <laughs> in the Middle Ages, torture was also prevalent, so in the 90s, we also get PHP. <laughs> <laughs> but in the 2000s, another revolution happened. The internet boom and its subsequent bubble. Code is not shipped directly to consumers in proprietary boxes anymore, but it runs directly in our, in our servers. Developers share with each other again, and free software becomes popular under the new brand open source. Furthermore, the Agile Manifesto is published in 2001, which starts like this. We value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. What a beautiful transposition of the humanistic values of the Renaissance. <laughs> New multi-paradigm languages like Python and Ruby capture our imagination. Alexandrescu publishes modern C++, and we work on new C++ standards that embrace ideas from the classics that are now mainstream again. We get lambdas, we get type inference, and the hope for a better language driven by open implementations. But in the last decade, a new disruption occurs, the mobile revolution. Systems are not built for desktop nor servers, neither embedded devices, but for all of them at the same time. This means the death of the universal. C++ developers now talk about Rust, Haskell, Clojure, a perfect example of polyglot programming. We embrace contradiction and build heterogeneous systems composed of microservices. Not only is our technology more diverse, 
We are also facing the challenge of building communities where people from all backgrounds can feel welcome and thrive. This is, so I said, not only is our technology more diverse, we are also facing the challenge of building communities where people from all backgrounds can feel welcome and thrive. This is to assert the value of human dignity as a form of resistance against the alienating for forces that sometimes permeate our, our industry. Still, I don't want to be too pre uh, prescriptive and just leave here a big question mark because in the end, we are living this era right now, so it will be whatever we make it be. Thank you very much.